Good evening. My name is Pastor Ian, and I want to welcome everyone to our Monday evening devotional. We've been taking a look at the theme of growing spiritual fruit with a focus in on the Apostle Paul's fruit of the Spirit as found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And it's there that he writes, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. We have taken a look thus far at the spiritual fruit of love and joy and peace. And this evening, we're going to be taking a look at the fourth fruit in Paul's list, and that is the fruit of patience. Now, perhaps I'm stating the obvious, but during this time of pandemic disruption, it's causing us to learn quite a bit about uh, patience. Whether it is waiting in line at grocery stores, maybe waiting online to connect in, in order to place an order, or maybe just waiting with our own lives, getting back to some type of normalcy. Our patience, this particular fruit that we have been given, is definitely being tested. We have become so used to living with a certain entitlement, maybe even instant gratifications, which is measured at times in seconds. And when our freedom is limited, to be patient is hard, is difficult, both personally and also as a culture. The current pandemic, as we are learning, is going to take some time to get through. But perhaps there's a lesson to be learned about patience in a time of trial. How deep our roots really are when it comes to being patient. We have a tendency, I know I have a tendency, to look for the quick fix or the quick solution. And when that doesn't happen, sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes... We, our, our default is that we, we get angry, uh, we become resentful or cynical, and then our targets may become focused in on others, uh, perhaps even ourselves, uh, governments, those who are in authority, but also with God too. Patience is not necessarily about a quick fix. It requires the long view of things. What I find interesting is that when we read various Bible translations of Paul's fruit of the Spirit, as in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the word that Paul uses here, the Greek word that is used here, is sometimes translated as patience. But in several translations, it's, accurate, it's accurately more translated as long-suffering or forbearance, which sometimes, in many ways, is even more descriptive than the word patience. Patience is about forbearance. It is about long-suffering. It is about a willing choice to face, to bear, to carry, suffering, hardship, difficult circumstances, even trying relationships over an extended period of time with the calm knowledge that good decisions can be made given time and wisdom and prayer. But let's be clear, and I need to make sure that I'm clear on this. Patience is not an acceptance of someone's physical or emotional abuse. Patience takes the long view for sure, but it desires what is good and what is positive. So in this way, patience is about long-suffering, it's about forbearance, it's about that choice to face, to carry, to bear suffering and hardship and difficult circumstances, and to do so with a sense of calmness, given time and wisdom and prayer. In many ways, this is the way that God treats us. Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 and 7 says this, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. That speaks of God's patience towards us. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 says this, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So as God is patient with us, so the Holy Spirit grows this fruit within the life of the Christian. It does so even within our relationships with others, perhaps even with ourselves. 
Now, perhaps today you are dealing with some circumstance where the future is uncertain, or you wish things would get moving faster than they are. We can pray to the Holy Spirit to work this fruit of patience within us. Perhaps you're having to modify your own expectations of yourself. Maybe you're self-critical, wondering about your own negative behaviors, and will they ever change? Well, that's an opportunity to pray to the Holy Spirit to work this fruit of patience in you, in you towards yourself. Perhaps you are in a relationship with someone and for whatever reason, your personalities or your temperaments collide. Or they may or not may, may not be meeting your expectations. Once again, an opportunity to pray to the Holy Spirit to grow within you a patience towards that person. Mark Mitchell is an author and a writer. And several years ago, he says this, I was moved by the writings of three well-known Christian authors, one of them being Eugene Peterson. I wrote to each of them a letter expressing my appreciation for the insights into spiritual formation. I also mentioned in each letter that I'd love to spend some time with them if they, were, if they had an opportunity uh, to do so. Within a few weeks, I received uh, several great, I, I received gracious letters back uh, from the other two authors, but I waited for my reply from Eugene Peterson. Months passed, and no letter arrived. My cynical mind concluded that this man who had written so eloquently about being, quote-unquote, an unbusy pastor, was just too busy or was too important to write me back. A year later, Mark goes on, he says, I was speaking to a small group of people and I mentioned the three letters that I'd written and the results, including Peterson's non-response. Little did I know that one of the women in the audience that night happened to be a good friend of Eugene Peterson. And she told me that she was scheduled to see him in the near future and she'd asked him about my letter. A few weeks later, a handwritten letter arrived from Eugene Peterson. And he explained that he had received my letter a year earlier, but had lost the envelope which, with my return address. And to my surprise, he kept the letter on his desk for an entire year, praying that somehow he would discover where to send his response. A few weeks later, when we met for lunch, he kindly accepted my apology for presuming that I knew why he had not written. Sometimes we presume to know why people don't meet our expectations. But so often, as Mark goes on to say and to conclude, we don't know the whole story. Remember, there are things in life that are not a quick fix. It requires patience, that slow-growing fruit. As God has been patient with us, as God has not given up on us, and our circumstances. Likewise, we pray for this fruit to continue to grow in us, in our relationships, and in our circumstances, and even towards ourselves. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our loving God, we give you thanks this evening for your patience and your long-suffering with us. In your mercy and in your love, you are slow to anger, and you are faithful in your forgiveness. We confess that patience is a fruit that we give little room to grow in our lives. Our pride, our anger, our hurry, our cynicism looks for the quick fix or the easy solution, and we forget to be calm and to consider with your wisdom and through your spirit what is going on around us and even in us. So we pray that you would give us your patience to handle the big and the small, to slow us down, to teach us how to be calm, help us to recognize when we should speak and when we should not speak, to keep things into perspective, showing what really matters. Our gracious God, we do not want to waste our lives frazzled, exhausted, and weighed down. So we thank you for offering us rest and that we can trust you with our lives, even when fixes and solutions are not immediately revealed. Once again, thank you for the gift that this day has been, for every opportunity given to us to understand someone else better, to understand ourselves better, to understand you better. And now, O oh Lord, grant us rest. 
grant us sleep and watch over our lives until the dawn of a new day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.